Hey guys, I'm here today with my second edition of Product Disappointments or Product Fails. Um, pardon my voice, I'm a little bit sick and kind of stuffy, so um, anyways, let's get started. Um, the first thing that I have that is on my list of disappointments is the MAC, and the shade is Posy. It's a blush cream. It is a super bright fuchsia pink. Um, I don't so much as dislike the the type of blush it is because I love the blush cream line but the color and it's a beautiful color it looks really great once you blend it out but I think my disappointment is the fact that you have to work so hard to get this product to look good um, especially if you have a fair skin tone and um, I'll go ahead and swatch the posy for you this will last me forever because it only takes a little bit but as you can see, and I'll go ahead and put this on, it is so rich when you put it on and it is so pigmented that it takes forever, like I said, with fair skin to blend it out. You can see I'm working on it still and it's still very bright and very pink. I do find that using a sort of a stippling brush and, um, you know, patting it on with that and spreading it around helps, but it still takes a while to get it to look right. And um, I sort of feel like if you don't use just a slight bit, um, you're just going to overdo it and look clownish. For me, that's a little bit disappointing because I don't think a product, um, I don't think you should have to work that hard to make a product work for you. I think it should be a lot simpler. Now, the blush cream line, like I said, is super awesome. There are other shapes that I love, but the Posy for fair skin is just a real disappointment. The second one I have on my list is the Revlon Fabulash Mascara. I'm always trying different types of mascara. I do prefer um, mascara that you can get in department stores, but again, I'm always on the hunt for really good drugstore mascara. And the Revlon Fabulash, and I'll show you what the brush looks like. It's just a really strange brush, and I don't mind strange brushes, but it's only if it comes with a good formulation of mascara attached to the bottle. <laughs> so um, yeah, the, the Fabulash Mascara, it's really it's really dry and when you go to put it on, it's very clumpy. Um, it clumps your lashes together and it, once it dries, it, it stays clumpy and you can lose little clumps of mascara off of your eyes if you don't comb through them and it's just really hard to work with. Um, and it does kind of get a little bit runny too. Um, if you get like sweaty or if you cry any, it's just, it's really quick to run. And I just, I'm not happy with this formulation. My next product disappointment, it has been the Sally Henson Lip Inflation Extreme. Um, I know there's different types of plumping glosses out there, and I've heard a couple of people raving about the Sally Henson brand. And so I picked this one up, and the color is absolutely gorgeous. I love the color. It's super pretty. Let me show you the color. It's a really pretty pink. You'll be able to see the color. It's like a bubblegum pink. It comes out really pale pink, which is a beautiful pale pink. But, um, I don't know. I've tried Lip Fusion. I've also tried um, Buxom Glosses. And for me, I just can't get past the the smell. It's like a... And, and the feel, actually. It's, it's a very spicy, sort of cinnamony, almost sickeningly cinnamony smell. Um, and it kind of burns. I know most plumping glosses tingle, but this one actually burns my lips. I don't know if I'm just super sensitive to it or what, but, um, yeah, between the smell and that, I just can't, I can't keep it on. I put it on and within like three or four minutes, I'm already wiping it off just because I don't like the way it feels. I don't like the way it's like goopy. Like if you put it on and then you like pop your lips together, you get a little stringy that goes in between your lips. I don't, I don't know. You know how glosses are gloopy? To me, it's kind of gloopy. So, yeah, I'm just not happy with this Sally Hudson Lip Inflation Extreme for those reasons. This was sort of another one of those cult favorites that I wanted to try. I was really excited about it, but it just didn't work for me. And um, it's probably because of my skin color. I have um, yellowish undertones and I have ivory skin. And this is the Revlon Color Burst in Soft Nude. And I can use this, and I will use this, but I have to put like a pinkish colored or a, or a deeper nude colored gloss over it to get it to work. Because on me, and it's a beautiful, like it's a beautiful color, it really is. But if you have yellow based skin or warm ivory skin tones, you can see it just doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't do anything for my skin, especially on my face. Here's the color. 
but it comes out like a one of those corals that is kind of a mist. You know, I don't know. If you have dark, if you have dark hair, dark eyes, olive skin, and you get the wrong kind of coral, you probably know what I'm talking about. Well, that's how it comes out on me. It's not nude at all. It comes out like a really light coral color. It's very hard for me to work with with my skin tone. So for me, the Revlon Soft Nude was a product disappointment. All right, another product disappointment I've had is with a pretty much of, and I actually have to keep it in a Ziploc bag because, um. It's so messy. It gets everywhere. And it is the L'Oreal Infallible Makeup. It's the 18 hours with the SPF sunscreen. And for starters, the the pump clogs up. You can see. And I've really tried to make it work. And I actually used this when I was a little bit darker on my skin tone. But um, it doesn't change the fact that it's still a product disappointment. Um, it gets gloopy. And I think I'm going to have to do it like this because I have actually overshot my hand, shot the countertop with this stuff. Like, just trying to squeeze it in my hand, it shoots out and goes all over the place. Um, yeah. So, uh, look, it's not even coming out. It's like, oh, there it goes. Look, seriously, it just blew out. Um, yeah. So, number one, I don't like how it dries around the lid, even with the cap on it. But I finally did away with the cap and used a plastic bag because no matter what I did, it was getting disgustingly messy everywhere. And it blows out every single time I try to use it. I don't know what it is with it. But, um, anyways, the reason I don't like this is because, now if you're looking for, like, a full, full, full coverage foundation, I mean, maybe you might like it, I don't know, but even if it is, you know, a full coverage foundation that lasts all day long, it's just so cakey. Like, you can't, you can't apply this thin. There is no possible way to share this out. I have tried. Um, I've tried with a damp sponge. I've tried with... Um, Fix Plus, I mean, I can't, I can't get it to blend out and not come out looking like you have a thick layer of makeup on your face. And I know, like I said, it's a darker shade for me, because I did use this when I was a little bit darker, but you can see how thick it is. And this is, I'm just showing you on the palm of my hand. But look, I mean, can you imagine if you had, like, fine lines or wrinkles? I mean, it's already started to dry over here. And you can see where it's kicking into those lines on my hand. I think this is a really good way to show the the quality of a makeup whenever you get it into fine lines or wrinkles if you show it on your hand and yeah I'm just really disappointed with that. I sampled this for a good I don't know like two and a half weeks and the Shiseido it's purifying cleansing foam and it has little beads in it but my problem is it's more like whipped. I think you can see it like here but it's very like thick it's almost like a I don't know, like one of those old-fashioned, like, thick, thick day creams, like, it feels like butter. It just feels like grease, and once you put it on, it literally takes forever to wash it off your skin. I want something when I wash my skin that's going to be really light. Um, if it's not an exfoliating scrub, I want it to be really light. I want to be able to wash my face, get a good lather, get a good cleansing, and get it off. Well, you can actually get this on your face and get a good foam, your face will be full of foam, but then you got to foam and foam and clean and wipe and scrub and scrub and it still doesn't come off. So it takes forever. It's just too time consuming and it actually broke my skin out. So um, the Shiseido, it just didn't, just didn't work for me. Last but not least, oh my gosh, this is the hugest disappointment. This was actually more infuriating than anything else. I had a fit. I had seen a couple of people rave about the um, Clairol Perfect 10. And this is all I have left from it. The rest of it went back to the company along with like an I hate letter. So anyways, um, I picked up the Clairol Perfect 10 in the dark brown. I think it was Espresso on the Double. And it stated it was like this, um, I checked online and the coloring was like a rich brown, sort of a, a chocolatey brown that's glossy and gleamy. And okay, so I was really excited about it because it only takes 10 minutes. Well, I mixed it up, put it in the bottle, shook it up, and right off the bat, I noticed it was super watery. Um, the texture was just kind of like coffee, but it looked like, um, sort of like a mocha coffee. So I was really excited, thinking it was going to be a super awesome color, it was going to be perfect, my hair was going to be like Pantene hair model. Okay, well I put it in my hair and I go to wash it out, and everything is, is like ink. It's like inky colored. And I thought, gosh, what is this? I mean, like there was purple inky coloring like coming off of my hair. And it was kind of uh, like dribbling on my skin. And I was looking, I was like, what the heck is this? This is like ink. Well, I figured, you know, whatever. Clairol knows what they're doing. This is no big deal. So 
I uh, went to rinse it out, rinsed it all out. I was in the shower for like 30 minutes trying to rinse it all out because it was so thick and so intensely like pigmented, the coloring. And I was terrified that if I left it in my hair, I'd wake up and it had like blue all over my face or purpley ink. Well, long story short, I got out of the shower, dry my hair off, and it is shoe polish black. Black, like black is night. And I've had black hair before, and I think black hair can be beautiful, but not like mop top mousy black. Shoe polish. Blah, 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 blah. Shoe polish black. Oh my god, I hit the root. I was so upset. I was expecting like a gorgeous, like brunette brown coffee color, and I wound up with black hair. I was. Oh my gosh, and you can't take black out. Even if you color oops it or try to lift it, it, there's nothing you can do. You have to wait till it fades out. Now granted, it did fade out, and this is what it fades out to, which I absolutely adore. But the fact that I actually had to go through that, oh my god, I was devastated. Absolutely devastated. So after the fact, I decided to go back through the pile of rave reviews where everybody loves this stuff, and then I started seeing some what I call real reviews, where people said, don't get this color, it turned your hair black. Well, it did. It turned my hair black. And I was so upset. So, yeah. The Clairol Perfect 10. I'm not even going to try the brand again. Because, I guess because it only takes 10 minutes. It's more pigmented and it's a lot stronger. And there's warnings all over the product packaging that says, you know, do not get this on your skin. Do not get this on your towels. Well, I know why. You know, you get it on your skin, it might take two days for it to wear out. I had to scrub the actual part where the coloration hit my skin, and it took about about a day and a half for that color to go away. So, okay, yeah, well, I totally ranted on this one product, but it was awful. So if you are trying the Clairol uh, Perfect 10 line, and you think you're going to go for a color that's maybe a little bit dark, be careful. I would go a shade lighter, because you never know how it's going to turn out, or, you know, just skip the, skip the kind altogether. I, I mean, I don't know, but... I just had a really rough time with that. It was very disappointing, and it, in my opinion, it, it ruined the color of my hair. Um, but, you know, it's hair. It's reversible. It just takes time. And um, and that's it. Um, yeah, look at her. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it for my product disappointments for this time around. And I hope you guys have a great afternoon or evening when you're watching this, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.